In the last video, we learned all the necessary tips for documents. So we are finally moving on to the next and most important item, creating videos. Most of us are already familiar with recording video calls on meetings, but not everyone is aware of all the easy methods to record your screen and your voice and your background uh, audio in the other situations out of a meeting. So that's what we are going to focus on this video and learn about how you can use video recording software. These are also sometimes called screen capturing software to record what's happening on your screen and what you're narrating. In the next video, we will discuss on uh, how we can edit and fine tune these videos to suit our needs, but that's a topic for the future. So let's move on. In this presentation, we will talk about two types of software. Out of this, in this particular video, we will focus on video recording software, sometimes also called capturing software. So this basically refers to the software that will record what exactly is happening in your laptop screen or desktop screen, sorry. So uh, there are many options for this. We are going to consider three options and out of that we will actually uh, adopt two, two of these uh, options. The first uh, option is actually using PowerPoint for this purpose. PowerPoint recent versions, especially the one in Office 2000, sorry, 3065, uh, offers us pretty neat methods for recording both your uh, PowerPoint presentation video and also to capture whatever happen is happening on your uh, computer screen out of PowerPoint. So we will discuss both of these methods. Windows actually offers a type of software that is installed by default uh, and you can use this to record. We will not cover this because I've tried it out. The sound quality is terrible. So we cannot use this one. And there are some third party recording software that are specifically for recording videos. So we will take a look at one such software called OBS, Open Broadcasting Software. Uh, this is a very popular software. It's free. There's nothing you have to pay here. And it does not have the usual restrictions that such free software have. So there's no watermark. There's no time limit, nothing. So we will check it out. For teachers who mainly focus on teaching using PowerPoint presentations, your coding using PowerPoint might be a good idea because here you can simply add voice narration to your presentations and make a video out of it. So that's a very nice option for teachers who focus more on PowerPoint. But for teachers who actually have to do a lot of things out of the software, that where you need more uh, when when your main requirement is to record the screen you can also accomplish this using powerpoint so we will take a look at both of these methods the video you get from powerpoint is actually very good quality however it has a small restriction that it cannot record desktop audio so if you are trying to show your students a movie or uh, for let's say something stored in a computer or something from YouTube, they will not be able to hear it if you recorded it using PowerPoint. PowerPoint will only record your voice. So that can be an issue. Also, um, the movement of the cursor is a little bit slower than the other options, but I think that's minimal. The main issue is uh, the lack of uh, lack of desktop audio. So other than that, it's a very nice and easy option. Recording slideshows with PowerPoint is rather simple. Just go to slideshow and click record slideshow. You'll be greeted with this screen. Once you press record, whatever you do in order to show your slide will be recorded. PowerPoint will remember when you clicked, when your animation played, when you used the pointer like this, so everything will be remembered by PowerPoint. Also, you can use your camera and your mi microphone to record yourself. Remember that this is simply the camera preview, 
this is actually turning on the camera so it's possible that you have your camera on but you don't have the preview on so you are not watching it but your viewers will later see it and this is the microphone so it should record if i click this but because i'm recording this video i cannot do that but it's rather straightforward just click this to start recording do your thing then press stop also if you mess up if you want to redo just press recording again it will overwrite whatever you did before a word of advice keep your recording short when you re-record powerpoint makes you narrate from the start of the slide again so if it's a big slide you will have to say everything again so it's best to have small amount of content in each slide and if you are displaced with the recording or you simply don't want to include any narration for this slide you can always go to clear and clear recordings for that specific slide it's also possible to clear the recordings for all the slides so right now we don't have any for this current slide so this is grayed out but i could clear the recording for our slides which i will not you can also change the settings like if you have multiple microphones or if you have multiple cameras you can choose that and these are simply a few tools to help you annotate your lectures you can use a highlighter a pen etc to 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 mark things and later this will be present in your slide personally i don't use them much because they look a little bit messy on on top of my text i would rather just use the pointer this let's leave the recording screen by either clicking the cross at the top right or pressing escape Once you're done recording your slides, you just go to File, Export, Create a Video, and click this. You can also choose what size you want. I recommend this because these are not good enough and this is simply too high quality and this should be enough. And make sure this is turned on that use recorded timings and narrations if you don't have any then it's all right to cancel it but since we that's our goal our goal is to add narration we will keep this on so that is how you do it recording the desktop screen with powerpoint is quite simple you go to insert tab then choose screen recording You get this panel here you can turn on your audio or ask powerpoint to record your pointer so if you don't record this then in your video there will not be any cursor if you do like this and if you select it there will be gray area behind it then your cursor will show up in the video same for the audio if the bell background is gray that means audio is being recorded if not then it's not being recorded also before you start recording you should select an area so let's say we are going to select everything except the taskbar now we are going to press record okay so we've started the recording I'm going to open a mp3 file and we're going to listen to a song so I can hear the song but when PowerPoint will record this we should not be able to hear anything because it's supposed to just record my voice so let's stop the recording you can either click here or press Windows key and shift and Q at the same time so let's press this the video has popped up in the slide we were at so let's listen to the video okay so we've started the recording so you can hear my voice let's jump to the point where we are listening to the audio we're going to listen to a song so i can hear the song 
But when PowerPoint will record this, we should not be able to hear anything because it's supposed to just. So you can see that there's no song here. So uh, you should use the PowerPoint recording option as much as you can because it's pretty good. It gives you clear, nice um, video. However, uh, if you want to record yourself playing some MP3 or some movie, so you should probably should not because PowerPoint cannot do that. You can also export the media outside of PowerPoint to use it. To do so, right click the video, choose Save Media As, and pick a location of your choosing. Let's try playing the video to check if this is what we recorded. We can see ourselves playing an audio file, so this is the right video. OBS, despite being a free software, has so many options that it can be better than even uh, paid software in many ways. This was originally uh, used by people who were more interested in streaming their work. So OBS will not give you as sharp video as PowerPoint does, but it will be much faster. Also, it's less um, resource intensive than PowerPoint and it manages to record desktop audio. So if you, uh, if you need the desktop audio that PowerPoint could not provide you, OBS is what you need. There's a, a small issue here that you will have to apply certain settings before you can get some good video. So I have included them in the next slide, so don't worry. And I will also uh, give a demo in order to show you how exactly you record with OBS. So let's move on to that. These are the OBS settings I recommend for my personal laptop. If you have a stronger laptop, you might change something in here. Like OBS actually has an opto optimization wizard, but my laptop uh, Core i3 is so weak that um, if I just let it auto optimize, I get bad videos. So these are the options I use. So if your um, laptop is as weak as mine, I suggest you use pretty much these the same options. However, some things will change. For example, my base resolution here you should pick whatever your computer resolution is. To first start up OBS, this is how the screen looks like. You can see there's already audio being recorded from my microphone, but there's no video source yet. So we're going to add one. The ones that will be mainly useful to us are window capture, display capture, and video capture. Window capture is it captures any one specific window. So let's say we want to capture our browser Chrome here. So you can see that it has been selected and now you can record what's happening in your Chrome. Say we also want to overlay the webcam video here. So we are going to add a video capture device. We are having the video feed from my webcam. In addition to the webcam, you can also select any other webcams you have. For example, if you have Droid Cam or some similar software, in that case, you can also show your phone camera's output here. You can see if I move my phone around, the video is changing. You can resize this if you wish. Or move it around. Or just not show it by clicking this I button here. If you wish to record the whole screen, in that case, you will have to add display capture. Here you can see that. The display capture will actually show you the OBS screen because that's where we are at right now. Let me open up a bunch of windows here and there. So 
I now have my multiple windows open on my screen. If I record, you will see that all of these windows will be visible. Now let's take an actual video and test out how OBS works. Until now, we were just arranging things. Now we are going to start recording. It has started. Now we are going to the screen. Maybe minimize OBS. So let's play a song. The song should be Okay, that should be enough. Let's stop recording. If we go to File, Show Recordings, this folder will open and we'll find the video here. It has started. Now we are. So you can see that the video does have my voice. Now let's skip to the part where we have some music and we will check if there's music in here. So you can see there is music. This isn't like a Microsoft PowerPoint where you can only record the voice. Finally, before we finish, there are two things you can do if you're not happy with the video record video quality you're getting. So you can add some filters. For video, it's mainly the sharpen filter, this will make your output somewhat sharper if it's a little blurry. So it's usually a good idea to apply something between uh, 0 0.05 to 0 0.08, not too much. And you can also add some filters to your microphone input if you wish. Usually because of background noise, I give two filters gain and noise gate so the gain allows me to amplify my voice a little bit and the noise gate makes sure that anything that's below 40 db is not recorded by the mic 